this is first time news i'm joe Borkin. actually good morning as it's 110 in the morning at the start of this video but the sixers do not have a good evening and are not having a good morning as they had a chance to end the series <clears throat> here in philadelphia but what do they do they play one of their worst games um, no, actually, the worst game of the play—not one of the worst games. The worst game of the play was they get spanked one o three to eighty eight after losing one ten to one o two, where the Sixers James Harden has played mediocre this entire series, and Tobias Harris was very good in the first two, not the same since. And when you have Joel the process Embiid at about it looks like seventy percent right now because of his thumb injury. You need other guys to step up, and right now you're not getting anybody to step up between James Harden and between Tobias. Tyrese is a young player that was great in the first <clears throat> um, three games, um, but it hasn't been as good in the last two losses, but he's a young guy that's in his first full playoffs as a starter. I expect him to hit peaks and bouts, where Toby and James I expect to be more consistent. Now, Toby... I think has looked like the best high effort guy out there each game. I'm not saying other guys aren't giving effort, but I'm just saying in terms of when he's missing and not doing his you-know-what right, um, he still looks like he's kind of in the grooves of the game where Harden seems at times even look just lost out there and throwing those lackadaisical passes, throwing shots that he's forcing where he's completely off balance. Uh, he doesn't seem like he can kind of find it, and hopefully this is not a la that one Houston playoff when James Harden really just couldn't find nothing at the three-point line, where in this, it's kind of like he's not finding nothing anywhere at this point. And the Sixers are really going to need him to step up big time going forward in these playoffs if they want to even advance past this round, let alone going past the Heat and yada, 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 so on and so forth to try to reach their destiny of a finals, which looked really good after the Sixers went up 3-0 and is looking a little bit bleaker now because, of course, in the regular season, and I don't try to heavily weigh regular season numbers into the playoffs, which is a different beast of nature in the playoffs, but they do matter somewhat at very least. The Sixers were booty against, they were crap against the Raptors <clears throat> in a lot of the outings, and in the games they were able to win, it was a battle, and it was... On series that the Raptors, I think, outplayed the Sixers more than the Sixers outplayed the Raptors. In the playoffs, the Sixers outplayed the Raptors mightily more than the Raptors outplayed the Sixers for the first three games, including surprising national analysts uh, in the first game in Toronto, where Joe Embiid was able to make that turnaround three that we then found out was with the messed up thumb, which makes it even more impressive. The issue here is they fall <clears throat> in the final game in Toronto, which is fine, because I don't know if everybody expected a series sweep. I know I didn't. I picked in six games, which it might end up being now, actually, what I said. But then revised it to potentially being in five after how good they looked. Because then they could seal it at home, which would be lovely to get that in front of the home crowd. Was not meant to be, though. James Harden, in that loss in Toronto, did have 22, but he shot awful from the field. Joe Embiid had a solid game. And Tobias was decent in that game. He... Tobias's issue in that game wasn't really a shooting at all, was he didn't shoot enough. Sometimes I would like to see Harris, when he's shooting well, like he did in the first two games, get a few extra shots up. When Joe Embiid's not a fully healthy uh, 100%, and James Horn is kind of playing like crap, let your shots get up, Toby, if you're playing better, because that was kind of the case in that losing effort. So honestly, I throw it in there. The first, uh, in, in about three of the <clears throat> five games as far, Toby's played really well. Tonight, I thought he played bad and poorly in the loss, just like the rest of the team, minus Joe Embiid, who I thought played fine, but just had to really battle through everything you can tell doesn't have it. Now, on defense, I thought it was one of his worst games, but offensively, I thought he battled through to get the 20, 11, and 4, and uh, defensively, he just didn't have it. He was getting beat. He was getting pump faked at the three-point line more than I've ever seen. He was getting drawn out, and guys were just going past him. It just wasn't there. It wasn't a good overall game from Embiid. But I thought he battled to be able to at least get us that 20 points. I did not think the rest of the uh, team battled enough, minus I thought Danny Green had a good game again. He was 44% from three, and I think over 40% from the field as well. James Harden <clears throat> shot okay from three, going two for six. 
but did not shoot. Um, well, did not really get that dog mentality of him back enough, like I said in the preview video. And Tyrese Maxey, again, a young player in his second playoffs, his first full one as a starter. I'm going to excuse that. Niang did nothing. Shake Mill did nothing. Paul Reed, uh, three and six, so that's fine. Six rebounds in eight minutes is fantastic, honestly. So he actually did his job. So the problem in this series, though, is you're not getting enough from the other guys. Danny Green has actually stepped up. Matisse Thybul didn't do anything today coming back into the lineup after being absent the last two, so he was basically obsolete. Joel Embiid's playing injured, so that's a key that you got to hopefully get the best out of the Joel in Game 6 so this doesn't have to go to 7 have the highest pressure situation. It'll be a cool, I guess, atmosphere in Floyd, but the highest pressure situation where they now have to win in 7 and have the potential to blow a damn series lead that they were up 3-0. to oh. And, I mean, man, if the Sixers do that, this is not going to be a fun video to put out um, after that because this is getting ridiculous. They need Harden to step up. Harris is actually shooting percentage-wise okay in games that are not the first two. It's just, in like in the loss in Toronto tonight, he just <clears throat> wasn't the best. But also part of that was because he should get up more shots when he's the guy that seems to be making them. And Harden sucks right now and hasn't had a good series at all. And Tyrese isn't having a good game. Get up more shots, Toby. So in conclusion, I think if Toby's playing well and looking like he has in most of these games, especially the first two games of the series, and even in the loss to Toronto where he shot fine, he just didn't shoot it enough in Toronto, not as much particularly in this loss, but still was having moments where he was shooting well like early and still had a couple more shot opportunities that he passed up. I would like to see Harris be more aggressive because he's been, I think Doc Rivers went over the top saying he's been the most consistent guy in the series, oddly enough. The guy that might have looked the most consistent as a bench player in the series just because he's finally looked like the two-way Danny. We like might be actually Danny freaking green. But um, I think he has looked pretty consistent, and it would make more sense to get him more shots. I understand that sounds backwards, especially coming from me, who sometimes comes at Toby a little bit hard. But if he's the guy that's hot, you got to give it to him because what's James Harden's done? I know he's more of the name brand, but what has he done in the series to show you that you're going to be able to get it done right and through him? Nothing. Joel Embiid obviously has shown you enough that you can get the ride through him, but right now with the thumb, he can't really ride through him entirely. And then Tyrese, this is the big thing. If Tyrese can have a big game, even like the second game of the series, I think the Sixers are winning in Toronto. And it's done in Game 6, like I originally predicted at the start of the series, Sixers in 6, and I think it's donezo. But if Tyrese kind of plays more like the last two, and especially like this last one, and really is a non-factor, which is fine because he's a young player and he's still growing. I think he's a star. He still had that beautiful up-and-under layup tonight and still had a couple plays, even while being an overall not the biggest factor in the game. I think he's probably intended to still going to be a star in the league. It's just you need to have others step up. And where's James Harden? Where's Toby being more aggressive? Where's the more aggressive James Harden? That's what I'm talking about. And if the Sixers don't get that, they might be in deep crap and uh, are going to be heading potentially towards what the Flyers did to the Bruins for my hockey fans happening to them in basketball term. And that will not be good. So let's turn around, get our heads out of our you-know-what behind, and be able to win this game in Toronto on Thursday, as I will be doing another late video then uh, to recap that as well, because I will be doing the Reading Royals broadcast at Sly Fox for people that want to come out and why I'm missing, as our Reading Royals AA hockey affiliate are in the playoffs. But this has been a reaction to the Fly, or to, the fly, to the Sixers sucking up the joint at home in Game 5, getting blown out in Game 5. And B played fine. Harris, I saw the grit there the whole game. Harden just kind of looked lost again. So I would say, keys going forward. Give the ball more to Harris if he looks good. You don't have to go through the name brand guyers all the time if they don't look the hottest and sexiest. And Harden's looked like crap this entire series. Harris has definitely had more good moments than James Harden in this series, in my own opinion. It sounds backwards to do that, but if I also think MB's going to try to take more upon him in this game six, whatever that becomes with with his best up uh, thumb, I feel like he obviously is <clears throat> bothered by it and held back by it, but also probably has tried to not overexert by it since this is just the first round. I probably thought the rest of the guys with how solid you have talent with James Harden and Tobias Harris and Tyrese Maxey and Thibault and others around him, that some of those guys would be able to pick up the slack. 
and it really hasn't happened other than Danny Green was able to pick up some slack for him tonight. But that's about it. So the Sixers went up 3-0 to just to now be tied 3-2, to having to win Game 6 in Toronto to avoid having the potential to get knocked out in the first round. Jesus. After being up 3 nothing. Please continue to subscribe down below. Up above on the Easy G's widget to keep channel growing to 230 or more by the end of April. We really appreciate you guys' love and support this far, everybody. Peace out, and go Sixers rebound on Thursday.